Well, I'm Darwin Anderson, a professor of soil science at the University of Saskatchewan, and we're here today in the boreal forest, but in a large wetland within the forest, a large poorly drained area. And within this wetland, the soils are of the organic order. Organic soils are those soils, in contrast to the other nine orders, that are developed on organic parent material. That is, the partially decomposed residues from, mainly from plants, but also from microorganisms, and even to some degree animals that build up in the soil, or build up on, usually on top of the mineral soil because of the fact that it's uh, of poor drainage or a high water table, really slowing the decomposition of the organic materials. This particular uh, wetland, or peatland, uh, ecologically people would call it a fen. A fen, very characteristically, has the water table at or very close to the soil surface for pretty much the whole year. Uh, the vegetation that's typical would be swamp birch, like we have here. Uh, usually, a low cover of of, shru of pardon me of, of of sedges. And here we have a, not only do we have a lot of sedges, there's a lot of equisetum or horsetail, and uh, and other other small uh, plants such as Eriophorum, uh, which is a, a cotton grass. So we have definitely have an assemblage of vegetation here that's typical of of a, of a poorly drained or wet area. The, now we'll have a look at the soil. Uh, we're expecting that the soil here will be formed on organic materials. And so if I take a sample of the upper part of the, of the soil, I get a sample that looks about like this. And we can see that this is really the, uh, the, the, um, the, the almost undecomposed undecomposed residues of the organic, of the vegetation. So this, this is this is a kind of peat material and we classify peat material based on its degree of composition certainly because we can see that this comes from roots and sedges and so forth we would describe this as being fibric material. Going a little deeper in a little, a little further down and uh, we'll sample here at a depth of about, about 50 centimeters and see what kind of organic soil we get from that depth. Well from this depth, and of course it's a, it's pretty wet because we're well below the water table, but we have material that's very mucky looking. It's this, uh, it's this, this uh, the, the peak material. And one of the tests we use to decide on the degree of decomposition is to basically, it's called the Van Post test, and we basically take a, a handful of this material and squeeze it very hard, and maybe I have a bit too much there. We squeeze it hard, and first, we, some of the things we look for, one is the color of the water that's coming out of the peat. Well, you can hear, see here, this water is quite dark in color. And it's, it's dark in color because it contains uh, de decompo uh, dissolved, uh, partially decomposed organic matter. But the other part of the test is that we squeeze the soil very hard, and of course the water comes out. To some degree, some soil even comes out between your fingers, but mostly here, we end up with most of the soil still within my, within my fists there. And as I look at this closely, I see that I can still see the remains of the vegetation, uh, the partially decomposed uh, veg veg vegetation material. And based mostly on the, on the color of the water that came out of the, uh, of the soil when I squeezed it, and what I see here, I'm considering this to be mesic, or moderately decomposed organic material. So at about 50 centimeters depth, and actually that's well within the depth we use to classify the soil. So at about 50 centimeters depth, we have a mesic peat. So now we'll go down just a bit deeper. And here now I'm down, I think just about, uh, well, I think about 75 or 80 centimeters. And we'll see what sort of soil we bring up. And once again, <laughs> It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty wet, it's really saturated with water, and it's, um, of course, it's dark brown to black in color. Uh, some things got in it this coming up, but uh, if we do the test again on a, on a part of this sample, uh, you notice squeezing it, I'm watching the, for the color of the water, and of course it's really dark now. Uh, that's the finely, very finely, fine particles of, of decomposing peat and actual soluble materials, humic materials we call them. So there's a dark colored water comes out of the peat, we squeeze it very hard and get most of the water out and then take a look at what's still remaining behind. 
But once again, I don't have too much difficulty seeing that this is the partially decomposed uh, residues, I think mainly from the forest vegetation. So because of that, we would tend to call material like this a forest peat, simply referring to the fact that the source of the vegetative, vegetative material or the organic material was a normal foliage, twigs, etc., mosses that are part of a forest ecosystem. So at about 80 centimeters, we have uh, still have a mesic, a mesic peat, of probably of forest origin. So now I'm going to go down to around a meter depth and see what what kind of soil is there. And we have we have a, quite a mess again, but once again we still have the um, we still have peat. We're not yet into the mineral soil. Well, yes, we are. We're just at the contact. If you have a look at that, this particular bit of soil, that is the very sandy uh, mineral soil that's characteristic of the land around here. And so, uh, just above that, uh, above that mineral soil, we have, we have, still have that, that moderately decomposed peat. I'll just take a, a closer look at it, perhaps, but I'm, I think that we will decide that. Oh, it is a little more strongly decomposed, but I think I'm still going to say that it's music or moderately decomposed. Actually, really strongly decomposed peats are a little bit rare in Saskatchewan. The, it seems to me most of our peatlands are wet enough that, uh, that about moderately decomposed is about as far as we get in terms of, uh, of, of, the, of the degree of decomposition. If it were more strongly decomposed, we would describe it as humic. Uh, that means that you can't really recognize any of the original plant materials. When you squeeze it, you get a very dark liquid coming out, and basically a lot of it squeezes out between your fingers because the particles are the little organic particles are so fine. So I think that depth was just around. Try one more little sample. Clean off the muck. <laughs> but we have, and you notice the the color of the. Uh, of this material. Once again, it's that sort of a, a dull olive color, and that's because it's well below the water table, so we're in a reduced environment. Uh, colors like that are, are characteristic of, of re reduced environments. But to texture the soil, we don't have to worry about wetting it up here, but when I texture the soil, you can see it, uh, it really doesn't hold together very much at all. Uh, I don't think it's possible to make a ribbon. Uh, in fact, Interestingly enough, I, I'm, it, it does have just a little bit of uh, a finer material in it. So it's not a sand, it's not a loam, but it's something in between that's very close to a sand that we call a loamy sand. So the, the texture of this material under the peat is, is a loamy sand. This particular soil is developed on uh, organic parent materials. These are an organic material that's, that's more than 40 centimeters deep, uh, so that puts it into the organic order. The four great groups within the organic order are fibrosol, where the peat is weakly decomposed or fibric, mesosol, where it's moderately decomposed or mesic, humosols for those peats that are strongly decomposed or humic, and a special group, tholosols, to cover the soils of a, a certain forest, uh, upland forests. Because, as we noted here, the peat, uh, and particularly in the control section, between uh, 60 and uh, 160 centimeters depth, and in this case between 60 centimeters and a meter, was mesic, or moderately decomposed, that makes this soil in the mesosol great group. And then there's several possible subgroups, if the soil was uh, deeper than 1.6 meters, 160 centimeters, it would simply be a typic mesosol. In this case, we found mineral soil at about one meter depth. So because the mineral soil is part of this control section, it has to be recognized in the name of the soil. And so, not surprisingly, we call this a teric mesosol.